Dawson Ryder the team. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. This is going to be my first ever Sentai ranking video. If you follow my channel, you know in the past I have done my rankings in various forms for Ryder seasons and Power Rangers seasons, and Sentai has been a huge request since I've started them, but it's always been weird because unlike Power Rangers, where I've seen all of them and can rank all of them, and Ryder, where I've seen all the Heisei through present, it makes it nice and clean, but with Sentai, unfortunately, I have not seen all of them. So, for this video, I'm going to be ranking all of the Sentai from 2010 onwards, so of the last decade, so from 20 2010 to 2020. And even though Shinkenger did end in 2010, I'm just going to start with the one that started in 2010. So go side, go Siger. So go Siger through Karamiger. Now, I want to open this up here at the beginning real quick to say, if you are interested in seeing it, I was thinking about maybe after this doing a video where I rank all the Sentai I've seen. So it'll be a little bit of a weird list because there'll obviously be holes in it. But that would fit in with what I'm going to be doing, which is updating my ranking videos every year for any changes in opinion based on rewatches and also adding in new series. So if you're interested in seeing me ranking all the Sentais I've seen and then updating it every year once I've seen more, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll mention that again at the end. So, But for now, I'm just going to keep this one simple. So these are all the Sentai from 2010 to 2020 so far ranked with Kira Major, which at this moment has not finished, but I'm including it anyway. And coming in at the bottom, in a surprise to no one, is Ninja. The most positive thing I can say about this series is that I adore the suits. I love the suits, possibly in some sort of at least top 10, 15, or 20 all-time suits. I think they're great. I even like some of the weird concepts for the Zords and stuff, and there's some cool concepts within the story, but I the only person I liked in the cast was Natsumi. I hated, uh, I'm forgetting Red's name, idiot boy. I hated him. I hated the cast. I didn't like the series in general. It felt like a whole lot of nothing had happened. It was like nothing and annoying stuff. And it was one of those series that just kind of is one of the shining examples of when I don't like Toku. Next up is Juoger. I don't necessarily have a strong dislike for this series. I just think it's kind of blah. Like I think of it just like as unbuttered bread that you didn't toast. Like. Also, I like the suits in this, and I actually do like the cube designs for this series as well. And there was a lot I really liked at the beginning about the mythology, but for me it just felt like a whole lot of nothing happened, and the pacing was very off, because when you did have a storyline, it would be like, here, we're picking up the story, and now here's 15 episodes where we don't even mention this story, and now we're picking it up again. And then, all the mythology questions I was interested in at the beginning ended up being, our powers come from the Earth's hope! That ain't it, fam. Next up is Ryu Soldier. This is kind of another middle of the road Sentai for me, which is funny because it's not in the middle of the list, but I really had a, a struggle with that series because I, again, start again, I like the designs. I love the designs, actually. I love the designs of the suits and the armors and the mecha, and I liked a lot about the concepts, but it was a really rough um, and painful show to watch. Like, it wasn't that great at the beginning. And then around the Guide Zorg arc, it got pretty decent. But at the end of the day, I just felt it was a very run-of-the-mill generic Sentai experience that's outclassed by most other things I've run across in a lot of ways. After that is Gosager itself. That was another one that was a bit of a rougher watch. Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but this is another one where I love the suits. All-time favorite suits there. The mecha suits are awesome as well. The concept is cool. Um, and then I had a rough period of time watching the beginning. But then when I did take a hiatus and rewatched it from a little bit before the Mantarintis arc, the second half is actually pretty solid. And I don't mind this series over Overall now, but like I think it's okay, and I don't really have a, a disdain for it like I do certain other series such as Ninja or even Juranger to a degree. I just kind of think it's okay. After that is Tokyujer. This is really interesting coming upon these right next to each other because Tokyujer and Ghostager and Ryu Soldier were all Sentai series that I struggled with and ended up taking a break from. Ninja as well, and they all benefited in different ways. Ninja did not benefit at all from taking a break and binging, but Tokyujer very much so did, even more so than Ghostager. I took a little bit of a break, and I would say roughly around maybe the halfway point somewhere, give or take, I don't remember exactly, but it still wasn't perfect, but I really grew actually quite fond of this series, especially Especially once you find out the revelation about them being kids and stuff, it recontextualizes some stuff. There's some really great villains. I think some of the last great villains we had, I think Kara Major's been doing pretty good, but before Kara Major, um, you know, some of the last really 
interesting and threatening feeling villain. So they had great villains, the concepts wound up being really interesting, and I actually have a soft spot for this series now overall, but it definitely was a little bit of a mixed experience. Next up is Lupin Ranger versus Pat Ranger. I wasn't sure whether to rank this or Tokyo before or after, because I wasn't sure, because Lupat definitely had its drawbacks. I think they also had issues with their plot pacing, and to be fair, it was much more so meant to be an episodic series at the core with a couple long-running plots, but I would say its biggest issue was just just with the pacing of those plots. Even though it was meant to be more episodic, they suffered from a lot of that same problem Geodra did where they would um, pick up and drop plots for really long periods of time and it was kind of awkward because there wasn't a lot of connective tissue between that time and also some unnecessary plot reveals like Noelle being an alien. But I actually really like this series and I think it's one of the testaments to where Ascent I ranks for me overall or just sits with me is how uh, if I miss it or not and it sits fondly with me and this one definitely did. I love I loved both casts of characters, I loved their interactions, and I have to give it a huge step up and a huge like soft spot just because I'm usually not an episodic guy. I do prefer more serialized storytelling. And the fact that I pretty much enjoyed every episode and just liked spending time with these characters I think was a testament to how much I enjoyed the series, even if it was very imperfect. But it was a good example of an episodic Sentai that I actually did enjoy. After that is currently Kara Major, which as of this recording has not finished, and this may raise in the ranks as time goes. Like it, as if it finishes really strong and it sits with me more and I rewatch it and like it, I could definitely see this maybe even becoming a future top five. But it's just gonna sit a smidge lower just because it's not done yet. But man, has this been series? Has this been series? Has this series been a breath of fresh air and a surprise? It's been consistently great. The characters are all likable. They've all gotten little bits of development. The momentum of the story is great. It's almost one of the more serialized Sentais I've watched, and almost every episode is counted. I think I could count on one hand the amount of episodes that I would consider altogether more useless, and even those weren't that bad, as even when we have more filler episodes, they usually contribute something to the backstory, to the character, or are just entertaining as hell. And I love the designs, the concept, the mythology is fleshed out and explained and isn't something stupid like it comes from the Earth's Hope. Man, what a surprise of a series. I'll probably obviously talk about it more when we get to to the series review and if I do the other Sentai rankings. And as I said, I could see this one raising in the ranks, but for now, since it's not done, it has to be pushed a little bit. Now next up is actually Q Ranger. Now this is one I could see Kara Major rising above because I would argue objectively Kara Major is much more consistent because Q Ranger had a little bit more of a rough beginning, whereas Kara Major hit the ground running right from the get-go for me. But I have a soft spot for this series, because this is one of those series that came at a time where I was kind of exhausted at a lot of Toku and a lot of Sentai, and we just came off of Juodra, and I just wasn't that enthused about anything, and I was really excited about these suits and the concept of so many Rangers, and then it kind of disappointed me at the beginning, but once it got going, it was one of those shows that really reminded me why I can enjoy a Sentai show. Like, I liked that the characters, even Lucky, I think, doesn't get enough credit for being a rare toku crackhead that actually wound up maturing as the series went on. And once it got going, it also had like a great momentum of story after story and serialization that was great. It wasn't perfect, a rough beginning, some cluffy, cluffy, clunky bits near the end that I didn't like, but I was thoroughly entertained and invested in, with these characters. After that is Kuryujir, which is a huge fan favorite, and deservingly so. I think this is a really great series that took me by surprise. I think it's one of those series that it's a great mix of tones, where when it wants you to really take the plot seriously and be invested in it, you can, but they can also be crazy and wacky. I think it incorporates it's something as wacky in the dancey, gr dancey, in the dancing great with the mythology, like in a really unexpectedly great way. A lot of criticism comes to the series because they focus too much on red, which I would argue happens in a lot of the series, but for me it never bothered me so much because considering the amount of characters Kiryujir has, I can still distinctly remember their story and character for almost every one, and that's kind of why red doesn't bother me. If he had overshadowed everyone and everyone was forgettable, maybe, but for me everyone was so memorable and this show just had a very unique charm. Coming in at the runner-up is Gokaiger, another huge fan favorite, which has done one of those things where it's gone from, you know, hyped to overhyped to be one of those things that people would think it's cool to hate because it's too overhyped, and it's got, it's done the whole cycle a bunch of times, um, and then Super Mega Force fed into it and made Gokaiger fans a little bit insufferable, but this is still 
a really great Sentai series that I think deserves much of its hype. I would say its greatest flaw is its weak villains, um, but that never really bothered me that much because you can't have necessarily everything always be perfect in a series. And I think the most important thing about this series for me was, obviously it did the anniversary aspects well, uh, but I think more importantly is it handled the Gokaijers and their story just as well, and it didn't feel like the series and the Rangers were just a vehicle for shallow fan service. It felt like, at the core, there was a show about the Gokaijers I could watch separate from the anniversary aspects, but the anniversary aspects were just the frosting on top of the cake, and that's why I really like the series. Now, number one for me is still Tokume Sentai Go Busters, my personal favorite Sentai of all time of this list, obviously. Spoiler alert if I end up do having that secondary sec Sentai ranking of all the ones I've seen. But this was just another Breath of Fresh Air series that really thought differently. It had a much more invested, serialized story, had really in-depth characters, and what I loved most about that was that, especially amongst the core three, is each one of them had a very different relationship to the situation that they were in, in terms of what they went through, because of the ages that they were at when their Begins Night happened. And I thought that was really cool, and it had an amazing villain with Enter, um, such unique suits and designs, even stuff like the way they fought was unique, which is something I also give props to Kara Major they do sometimes, but Go Busters, you know, had it where you would have mecha battles and ground battles separate from each other and it didn't make it feel as formulaic. It was just such a unique and special series for me. But that is it, guys, for my ranking of the 2010 Sentais. As I said, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me do uh, a video where I rank all the Sentai I've seen and then keep updating it. And if I get enough replies, I'll try to get that one out um, sometime Sentai soonish. Or I was going to say make Sentai be semi soonish, but the pun didn't work. So just let me know. And also, let me know your guys' rankings of the 2010 Sentai in the comments as always. Until next time, drop a like, comment, subscribe, climb the steps, ring that bell, so you can see some of my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.